Okay, so as you can see here, we've got the Godox V862. Uh, this one happens to be Nikon coded. Um, it's actually produced by uh, newer, uh, but they're all the same between, you know, Godox, GSD, and uh, Flashpoint, whatever. Um, and this would be the same process, more or less, for a uh, TT360, uh, I'm sorry, a TT685 or anything else. Uh, but if you're someone like me that uses Mac primarily and you're having challenges updating your firmware, um, you know, first things first, we'll check the firmware, the current one. We do that on this model by holding down the Zoom custom function button. And we can now see that we're at version firmware 1.3. So that's good to go. I'm going to go and power that off. Uh, pull out the battery. Just make sure there's no power source in there. And we'll get to plugging it into the Mac here in one second. As you can see here, it's just a standard... Uh, micro USB chart, uh, port that we're going to plug in to here. Once again, power source has been removed. I'm not sure how much that actually matters. Okay, so luckily for us, there is a free virtualization application called VirtualBox. Just simply go to virtualbox.org uh, in your Safari browser or whatever your browser of choice is in uh, Mac OS. Click on the big download VirtualBox icon in the middle, and then you'll see in the middle here there's OS 10 hosts. Click on that. And you'll see here, this is now in the act downloading the installer for the VirtualBox application. And VirtualBox is what's going to enable us to run Windows in a tiny uh, virtualized session here on our, on our Mac. So come here to Downloads, and you can see here, I've already done it a few times, uh, but I figured I'd do it one more time just for sake of recording so I could uh, share with you lovely people. And um, you'll see here, this is going to be, you know, pretty familiar uh, look if, you know, you ever install things on Mac. Uh, it's fairly common to see it mount the disk, uh, check the DMG file for everything, make sure it's good. And then from here, instead of strictly just dragging it straight into applications, you actually do need to run the installer here. Um, it's because it's actually going to access a little bit, uh, some of the, you know, uh, lower level operating system uh, functions like actually getting like, direct access to the USB bus and stuff like that which is really important for the uh, for us to be able to plug in the strobes here over USB and have it work properly so um, you know if you've got one of the new MacBook Pros it's got the fingerprint reader it'll read your fingerprint there or maybe it'll prompt for an administrator password uh, if you're using a you know, different Mac uh, lineup uh, hit close and you'll see here it'll volunteer to clean up behind you which is just swell of it go ahead and say yep go and choose move to trash and now that we have VirtualBox itself installed you'll see that's running down here that's that's available down here uh, in our applications uh, you know uh, our applications folder we need to actually download a free VirtualBox Windows uh, virtual machine and what's really cool is Microsoft actually makes them available to developers um, and, and really anyone um, specifically for testing of different browsers and so uh, what I would recommend doing only because it's it's you know simple um, compared to like you know Windows 10 or something like that I like to just come in here and just use the Windows 7 box uh, select you know IE 11 really it doesn't actually matter which one of these you pick but choose one of the Windows 7 boxes uh, for platform make sure that it is set to virtual box because there are a lot of great other virtual uh, virtualization platforms out there um, and then hit uh, download zip. Um, now you'll see here, it's going to give you, uh, you know, warning, look, these machines do expire after 90 days. They are not meant for long-term use, and, um, you know, that's completely fair. Um, but this is a perfect application to, to use one. So hit download zip here, and you'll see, depending upon what your connection speed is, um, it's 4 gigs. So it might be a while. So this might be the point where, you know, if you're, you know, go make a cup of coffee, uh, you know, come back in the morning, just sort of depends on what your speed looks like. Uh, but the good news is, you know, I've already downloaded that and got that set up. Um, so, you know, through the power of video playback and some trickeration, I'm going to just cancel that download and in just one second you'll see I'll have uh, one ready to run here in my downloads folder, ready to go. Okay, as you can see through, you know, magic of time travel, uh, we now have what we can see here is called ie11-win7.ova. Uh, OVA is just the file extension for uh, what is a uh, Windows virtual machine. Um, what's great is because we have VirtualBox installed already, all we need to do is just double click that OVA file. Um, if it's the first time you run this, it might ask you a few questions about some of the machine settings for setting up this virtual machine. Um, it's, it's safe, actually, so like you can see just like this. 
Um, it's safe to leave these really here uh, at, at the default values. There isn't anything here that's particularly um, needs to be changed for what we're doing. Um, so just leave it as is and hit import. And you'll see here, uh, importing virtual disk image, and it's, you know, go ahead and uh, pull this in. Uh, once again, I will fast forward here until this is done. This doesn't take super long, um, but it should be done here uh, momentarily. Okay, so that took probably maybe three to four minutes, not too bad. And now you'll see within this Oracle VM Virtual Box Manager, uh, it'll show, you know, IE7, or I'm sorry, IE11 Windows 7, and we click start. And when we do this, um, this is where you'll, you'll see literally it is just a virtual machine. It is a, an instance of Windows uh, that is going to run inside of our Mac operating system. Um, it'll just kind of run on top of it. Um, you'll see here, if it'll make mention of you know auto capture keyboard turned on. What that means is if you ever happen to be in here, maybe you give your mouse to your keyboard and it gets stuck and you can't pull it out of uh, Windows. It seems like it's, it's stuck in the Windows lane and you can't get it out. Just hit the uh, option or I'm sorry, not option, but hit the, the left command button. You can see here they kind of give you a hint down here uh, where it says left command. Um, just because these are provide a little bit of visual clutter, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. Um, on a completely clean install, you won't have Dropbox there. I went ahead and installed that just because I like to keep all of the uh, Godox, uh, Flashpoint, or you know, whatever brand you want to call it. I like to keep all that firmware just in my uh, Dropbox because it's an easy way to pull it between machines, especially if I just save it in. Uh, on the Mac side and then drop it into uh, Dropbox it'll it'll be readily uh, it'll already show up here for me in my uh, little windows here so and other fun things too like you know like Fuji film simulations so um, so now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and install the Godox G1 uh, application that's the software updater uh, the install process is actually the same for the G2 um, it's just, it depends on, you know, which product you're updating. So if you're doing like an AD200, uh, that, for example, uses the G2 software. Uh, you know, all that information is available on Godox's site as far as which one uses which. Um, you can see that easily. So just double click on the installer here for the Godox G1. It's going to ask, you know, are you really sure you want to do this? I will say yes. Choose next. Um, after carefully reading in terms of the agreement, click I agree. Click next, next, next. Next, next. And after this point, you're going to see it's going to pop up a uh, welcome to device driver installation wizard. Go ahead and allow this to complete. And you'll see here it's installed uh, Godox Corporation uh, Libbus drivers. And then I'll click finish. And now I'm going to pause to go grab a flash and a cable. Be right back. So now that I've uh, installed the uh, Godox G1 application used for installing uh, firmware updates, um, there's a very important step, and this is this is probably where a lot of people get hung up. Uh, you have to actually tell VirtualBox here that you want to have those USB devices get passed through to uh, the virtual machine because it'll kind of protect your virtual machine from anything you know in the outside world. So all we need to do is come in here now and. Uh, select uh, ATML, ATMEEL, DUF Godox 004. You want to click that. Uh, that will, like I said, kind of create that connection. And now you'll see, even see here, installing device driver software. So um, that's a good chance that we now know that, okay, Godox USB is ready to use. And we're going to have success now when we try to update this. So just double click the G1, select file. Uh, make sure you find the correct file. This one in this case is. V862N uh, for the Nikon, because it's the Nikon flavor strobe. And you can see here we've got a matching product. And when we hit connect, you can see there we have successfully connected. Um, I would hit upgrade right now, except for I've actually already run it on this one. You know what? I'll go ahead and do it anyway. I don't think it can really hurt. We'll find out real quick. So it erases, it writes, the upgrade is complete. Um, what you could see differently, I'll go ahead and show you what would happen here. I'm going to come up here to devices. And under USB, I'm going to uncheck this. And in doing so now, it is even though it's still plugged into my Mac, it's not passing that through. Uh, so the, the little Windows machine here isn't really aware of it. So I hit that, and now when I hit connect, it's going to give you that big red connect failed. So if you're getting that connect failed, nine times out of ten, that's what it is. Just make sure you come down here to USB. It's going to show all of your different USB devices that you've got plugged in. And just go down, check that Godox one. And uh, that's effectively just plugging it in. I'll hit connect again. 
Oh, there we go. Now it works because I, I connected it and I plugged it in. So, uh, but then from there, it's just a simple matter. Use the same uh, process to verify that the correct version is on your uh, whatever it is you're upgrading, and uh, you should be good to go. Um, that should be about it. I'm not going to say this is the easiest thing in the world if you're not familiar with you know virtualization or just navigating um, stuff like this. And so if it seems like it's beyond your skill level, then fine, don't, don't worry about it. But if this is something you're comfortable doing, just know that there are some good free resources out there that you can uh, pretty reliably use to do this type of thing uh, without having to pack up all your gear and go visit a friend with a Windows computer. So um, that's all for now. Um, if everyone has any questions, you know, feel free to drop me a line you know, here, uh, either on YouTube or on Facebook uh, or on Twitter. Um, and I will actually go ahead, in the description, I'll put links to those downloads for both the VirtualBox downloader as well as the uh, Microsoft uh, free virtual machines that they uh, offer for lab use. So, uh, once again, that'll be all. Thank you so much. I hope everybody has a great day and have a good time shooting. Okay, so here you can see we've got our strobe. It's been unplugged. I've, re I've put the battery back in. I didn't show you guys that, but I assure you the battery is in fact in here. Um, now... Just turn the uh, flip the switch, turn it on. Once again, come over here to zoom, hold that custom function button, and now in the top right, you can see it does reflect that version 1.5 instead of version 1.3, which is what it was on uh, before. So you know, while we're in here, go ahead and make any kind of custom settings. You know, I prefer uh, you know the imperial versus metric, uh, but whatever. Um, that's about it. So pretty easy. Um, if you're not at all comfortable with anything I've talked about in this video, then by all means, please just don't try it. Don't screw it up. Just Wait until you can get access to a friend's computer machine or a Windows machine. Um, that's all. And uh, good flashing. Everybody have a good time. Bye.